starter. See how things are working here. So with Pactware, I'm going to go, uh, I already had it open. I'm going to go, I'll do file new so you can see the whole thing here. So we'll start new, add a device. I'm going to use the Ethernet connection because I've got a BL20 economy gateway. You see here in the static IP address on my PC is right here on my wired connection. I'll double click here, which brings up the bus address management window. And you can see here I'm using the local connection, not the wireless. I'm using the local. If I hit the eyeball here, the search tool, you should see it go out and it finds it. Now, if you notice for some reason, when I click on this here, it goes out and it comes back with no online ID and it gives me the question mark here. If I hit this button again, it eventually rings up with the right product, right code. And then this button right here is the add device or DTM files to my system. So let me click here and it should import everything that's connected here. So we'll say okay. And if I click on the device over here on the left, it'll show you a picture of my BL20 node. Pretty simple. I've got the BL20 economy gateway and then one eight channel analog input slice here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the channel and I wanna show you the default settings. Usually when you get this from the factory, it comes up set up as zero uh, plus minus 10 volts. Well, I've got a analog input wired into channel two on here as a uh, zero to 20 milliamp signal. So I have already went ahead and changed this channel to be a zero to 20 milliamp input. I also want you to take notice that the data format from Turk is a 15 bit plus the sign. So just keep that in mind. It acts a 15 bit plus the sign here. Um, if I want to go online, and see what's currently here. I can right click on this guy and I can do the connect button here. It should go online here. And then I can right click and I can do a measured value and it should show me live data right now that I've got nothing coming in to channel two right here. This is channel two right here. So nothing's coming in right now. Another nice thing about Pactware is if you're worried or want to know where the IO is located as far as mapping goes, if I right click on the node right here and come down here to additional functions, right here I can go to station report and I can tell it that I want to actually, I want to see basically for this example, I just want to see the mapping. So I'm going to leave the field bus report here, click OK, and it's going to start another tab. And here it is. And if I click on the input data, I know it's hard to read, but I'll try to make it a little bigger. If I go down below, you can see that slot one is right here. And all of the data for that slot is going to show up right in words, uh, basically words one through nine. These numbers are plus one when you get into the red line software. So Turk starts at 40,000 zero. These are all holding registers. Red line so starts there is at plus one offset. So they're plus one of this. So uh, anyway, we're going to look at channel two which should be 40,002 register here is what we're going to look at. So I'll go ahead and uh, just go back here to the online so you can see it here. Now I'm going to go over to the Red Lion software. And if I go to communications, you'll see here that I've already got set up. Make this a little bigger so you can see it. I've already got set up this thing as protocol one as a Modbus TCP IP master. And here is the uh, Turk device right here. I'll go to data tags. And I got a tag in there now for something else I'm doing, but let me go ahead and create a new one right here. Let's call this one uh, BL20 underscore channel two. Notice it's blue because I haven't mapped it. So if I go over here, I can come down and I can choose the BL20 device, holding registers, and it should be number two here. So I'll put 40,000, I'll just put a two there. Hit okay, it's gonna be a read only. So I'll leave it read only. I'm going to leave everything else alone for right now just to show you what happens. If I go over here to display pages, I'm going to shrink this over here. And then I want to go over here because I want to drag this out because I'm going to use this guy to mimic my analog input because I'm actually going to be driving an analog output from a banner wireless node into my input because I don't have anything that generates a 0 to 20 milliamp signal. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to pull this value out so we can see what it looks like. Whoops. 
right now in the raw format. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a green border. Yeah. All right. Let me go ahead and download this to my screen. There we go. And I've got a web page already pulled up. So this should pull up the web page. And you can see right now there's some kind of number in there right here. If I go over to Pactware, notice that it's currently showing nothing really is coming in there. If I go back to the web page, if I put in, say, 10 milliamps here, notice this number goes to 10 here, but here's the raw input value that's coming in. If I go back to Pactware, notice here it comes up to exactly 10 milliamps here, 9.99 milliamps. Pretty good there. But what I really want to have happen is I want this number here to show the same milliamp reading that Pactware is showing, or the same as I'm actually putting in it. So what I'm going to do is over in Crimson, I'll go ahead and right click and I'll jump to that tag. And because the Pactware software shows it as a 15-bit, I'm going to go ahead and make this a signed integer. And I'm going to go ahead and down here, scaled integer, I'm going to say 0 to 32,767, which is full-scale 15-bit resolution. And down here in display from, I'm going to say 0 to 20 milliamps. But I'm going to put a 2,000 in there. Well, you know what? Let's try this. Let's try this. Let's put this scale of floating point. Let's try this. See what happens here. Make it 0 to 20.0. And I'll go over here. If I click on the screen, it'll update. Maybe it won't. We'll go ahead and see what happens here. I'm going to go ahead and download this to the screen. And then I'll go back to the web browser. And see what the result shows here. Aha! Look at there. 9.991 when I'm sitting here. If I change this to say uh, about 5.65 milliamps. There you go. Now I don't want the last two digits here. So what I'm going to do is I'll go back to here. Go to the data tags. If I go to the format tab for that guy, go to the format tab on this one here. If I hit the pick button, I can declare it as numeric, and I believe I can put a two and two here, like so. Go over here, there it shows it. Let's see if this corrects our problem. Let's see here. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's go back to the browser. Aha, look at there. It sure did. So if I put in here 7.93, for instance, there it is. Spot on, and it also follows exactly what's happening here. Okay, now let's do one more thing. Because in most applications, seeing the milliamp reading is not really applicable. What would be applicable would be a 0 to 100%. So what I'm going to do is I'll go over here, and let's go ahead and create another tag for giggles. And I'll call this one, I'll do, hold on. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and just copy this guy. Copy. Paste. And I'm going to call this one percent. Because I want this one to show up as 0 to 100% over that range. So instead of scaling to a floating point, I'll do scale to integer. Don't worry about the errors. I'll fix that here in a second. And here I'm going to put in 100. Yeah. Oops, 100 like so. I'll go to the format, and I'm going to say, you know what, now it's going to be 3 and no decimal points, because 0 to 100 only has 3 decimal points before it. And if I go over here to display pages, I'll go here and pull this guy on the screen like this. I'll make it a little bigger. And I'll go ahead and give this guy a border too. Do a yellow border on this one. Okay. That looks good. Looks good. All right, let's go ahead and download this change and see what happens. Here. I don't know why it's being slow like that. But... Well, it should be downloaded by now. Okay. Uh, why is it taking too long? Okay, let's see here. Why doesn't get any emails? 
Aha, so now it's at 40%. If I change this to 10, it should show around 50%. There it is, perfect. All right, let's see here. What I wanted to add here to this graphic was I wanted to, uh, like this guy, put on a bar chart, for instance, like we have going here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here to data tags, and on this percent one, I'll pick it because I know the percent is now going between 0 to 100. Notice I am at the format tab for that guy. So I'm going to do 0 to 100. If I go over here to display pages, and if I go to the right side and go into primitives, um, I'm going to choose core primitives. Oh, I thought there was something here. Hold on. Let me see something. Back here in legacy primitives. Ah, that's not what I'm Hold on. I'll go back to where I was. Up in core primitives, I'm going to grab the old rounded rectangle, and I'll grab a yellow one out here like this. And I'll stretch this guy like this, just like in Pactware software. And I'll right, I double click on it, and I'm going to say, you know what? I want this thing to fill from the left with the tag called channel zero percentage, like that. So that should do that. And uh, let me give it a different color border here. There's that. And uh, let's go ahead and give this guy a scale also, since I'm doing this. Legacy. Here's a simple vertical scale. I haven't used this in a long time, but let's see what happens here. Double click on it. Fix the scale. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, did it, did it, did it. oh, it doesn't allow you to uh, put any values in, does it? Well, oh, that's a bummer. I was looking for. This is adaptive. Ah, there we go. So we changed that to 0 to 100. Sorry, guys. Okay. Ooh, that's way too many. Minor divisions. How about 0? What does that do? No. And let's put in here 10. That. Okay. Ah. Still too many. Let's put 10 here. There we go. That's better. Sort of. Still don't like that. Hold on. Sorry. There we go. All right, so there's our looking thing. I'll go ahead and save this. I'll download to my screen. And if I go over to the browser, see what happens with troops. Look at here. Right at 50%, if I change this to, say, 16 milliamps, it comes up to right about here, 80%. Is that really 16? I don't know if I did it right. Five. Six, seven. Eight. Yep. Okay, it's good enough. Yep. So, uh, works pretty cool. Um, and if I change this to maybe five. Yep, awesome. I don't know if I like the scaling, but it shows up the same as what it's doing over here. This thing should be live. I just want to see the changes. Change the value. Close that window. Okay, let me close this window. I'll try to get that window back up here again. Measured value. Really? Uh, well, hold on here, team. Let me do this. I don't know why it went to dash lines, but let's go ahead and disconnect from the whole thing. Try one more time. We'll go ahead and connect. Go ahead and connect to the slice. Go here to measure value. Is it? There's no errors. Well, okay. I don't know why the major value window is not showing up there. Oh well. Nonetheless, that's how you can make it uh, interact with the different tag levels and scale it from 0 to 32,767 will be your analog input values on the Turk Field 20 when interfacing to the 
redline HMIs.